still believe that China's just the world's factory, or that made in China means cheap, but probably inferior quality products. Well, if you do, you're a bit behind the times. These iPhones, of course, are all made and produced in China. And so are dozens of other high-tech and luxury goods designed in the West. But things have moved on. Chinese factories are still making great brands. It's just that now many are producing great brands that are Chinese. Pioneering Chinese brands are changing what Made in China stands for. They're pulling apart the view that China's just a nation of copycats and rapidly earning a reputation for quality and innovation. The eastern city of Qingdao is famous for its brewery, but it's also home to Haya, which is now the world's biggest maker of fridges and domestic appliances. And at their corporate HQ, there's a sledgehammer on display. Why? Because in the mid-1980s, when Chairman Zhang took over as CEO, he discovered that 20% of his fridges were faulty. So he put them in a line and smashed them up with a sledgehammer. They thought he was mad, of course, but actually he was a visionary. Because it was only by insisting on top quality that the brand had any future. The Chinese government has also now recognised that Made in China has a bit of an image problem. Part of its big push is now to change all of that. The National Made in China 2025 programme is at the heart of this. The plan is to vastly improve the quality of Chinese goods, focus on digitisation and develop strong, valuable Chinese brands that the world wants to buy. High-tech areas like robotics, pharma, aviation and electric cars are where the government has set its sights. And Beijing's providing business incentives and money for R&D to help make this happen. But 2025 is just the first stage of this blueprint for change. By 2035, China aims to be making major industrial breakthroughs. And by 2049, a hundred years after Mao founded the People's Republic, China wants to have its brands on a par with the best in the world. And that's got countries like the US worried, and is partly why President Trump has slapped tariffs on Chinese exports to the US, and the Chinese-US trade talks are so complex. But if 2049 sounds like the distant future, it's important to know that China's drive for world-beating quality is well underway. Already, it has plenty of technology and commerce that is better than you'll find in the West. Go to China today, order from the retailer Alibaba, and you can get your order delivered in under 30 minutes. And it may well arrive by drone. You can make payments with your phone, of course, but with facial recognition technology, you can also pay with just a smile. They're shops with no checkouts. Driverless cars and buses, social networks that connect more of your life than Facebook or Twitter combined. Are these things really innovation? I'm not sure that really matters. This is a market that's changing, and it's changing at China speed which is 20 times the speed of anywhere else. And the change is happening fast. WPP research tells us that consumer opinions on where products are made can change dramatically too. Just think of Japan and Korea. In the 70s, a Made in Japan label meant you'd probably bought a pile of rubbish. And now you'll pay quite a premium for Japanese goods. Sony and Toyota are among the brands that have helped change people's minds along that journey. 
and views about Korea have altered even faster, thanks largely to brands like Samsung and Hyundai. In China, we're not saying that the quality gap isn't real, but it is closing, and that's happening even faster than it did for Japan or even Korea. There's a growing number of brands that are raising expectations of Chinese goods around the world, especially in fast-growing markets. Names like Haya, Gri, Huawei, Lenovo and Xiaomi. But are they really changing people's minds about made in China? Well, yes, they are. WPP's BAV runs an annual Best Countries ranking, which measures how people around the world feel about countries and what they offer. Think of it as countries, as brands. China has risen 16 places out of the 80 countries in the study in the past two years alone. It's now ranked 16th overall, just behind Spain. What's really interesting, though, is what China's perceived as being good at. It's viewed as being open for business, forward thinking, the best place to start a business, and innovative. So views about China change. So do views about Chinese goods and vice versa. Our Brand Z research shows that when people think of Chinese brands, there's still some work to do on building trust. But innovation is strong. People see Chinese brands as leading the way in their category, being creative and shaking things up. Our research shows that younger people, the under 25s, think more positively about Chinese brands than any other age group. They're increasingly seeing Made in China as pretty cool, and opinions differ depending on where you live. Here in the UK, consumers are amongst the most positive in the world about how Made in China affects their buying decisions. They're voting with their wallets, and as these young consumers get older, demands for brands that are made in China will only get stronger, well beyond 2025. So, you've probably heard of Alibaba, the giant of online shopping in China. You know that Haya makes fridges, and Huawei makes smartphones, and Lenovo brought the personal computing division of IBM. And you'll probably know that these new London taxis are now all made by Geely, a Chinese business that only launched in 1986 and has since bought out Volvo. But there's a bunch of other rising Chinese brands, hundreds in fact, that you've probably never heard of but you really ought to know about because they're a sign of what's to come. WPP's been working in China for over 40 years. We know this market well, and we see that change is in the air. Here are some of the brands we think signal the can-do spirit and increasingly global vision that Chinese brands now have. Oppo started out making MP3 players, remember those, then MP4 players and Blu-ray players, but now its big thing is smartphones. It's sold around 200 million camera phones worldwide. It pitches itself as the selfie specialist. What's exciting though is not so much what they're doing in China, but how it's localizing each time it enters a new market. In India, it's gone from unheard of to a household name in just three years. The reason, localization. It's partnered with the Indian cricket team for its advertising. This video alone has been watched 32 million times on YouTube and it's launched a special red limited edition phone to celebrate Diwali, perfect for capturing those special moments with the family. Yeah. 
Chinese brands are also doing online games exceptionally well. Yuzu is among the brands making a huge impression. It's best known for its fantasy game, League of Angels. It's played by hundreds of millions of people in around 150 countries. The business is less than 10 years old and already it has eight overseas offices. It's generating about half a billion US dollars in revenue a year. Like many thriving Chinese brands, its focus is on three things, high quality, famous intellectual property and globalization. You know about Alibaba and JD.com, which sell, well, just about everything you can think of. Now, meet She, which focuses on youth fashion at bargain prices. There's clothing, shoes, jewellery and other accessories, all aimed at young women and teenage girls. It turned 10 years old this year and delivers to over 80 countries. It has warehouses around the world for speedy shipping. And it has websites for customers in the US, Middle East, Australia and a bunch of European markets. The brand's been such a hit with global bargain hunters that it's been able to buy up another cross-border fashion brand, Romeweave. Ninebot is another Chinese brand you're probably not familiar with. But if you've heard of the US brand Segway, then you'll have an idea of what they do. In fact, Ninebot bought up Segway three years ago, just three years after Ninebot launched. It's a robotics and transport specialist, and it manufactures both in China and the US. Ninebot sells in over 80 countries, and it's growing at about 40% a year. Techno is another smartphone brand, and it's one that's not even that well known in China, much less in the West. But go to Africa and you'll find Techno's phones are everywhere. In fact, around every third mobile phone sold in Africa is now a Techno. They're selling more than either Apple or Samsung. Like others, Techno's been localizing, but not just with their communications. Techno's phones have been adapted to the conditions of Africa. They have multiple SIM slots and super long battery life. That's important in a market where it's not always easy to plug in and recharge. Techno has developed a way of getting better selfies for people with darker skin tones. Why do you need to know about these brands? Because they're agile, they're innovative and global consumers know a good deal when they see one. These are only a handful of literally hundreds of young Chinese businesses launching in China with plans to go global. Already there are dozens of Chinese brands that have become heavy hitters internationally. Lenovo, for instance, makes nearly three quarters of its revenue from outside of China. And there are Chinese airlines, energy companies, appliance makers, all sorts that make around half of their money from outside their home market. Should you be worried or maybe even excited? That's up to you. Just don't let the rise of Chinese global brands pass you by. Only a generation or so ago, there were no Chinese consumers to speak of. At least, not in the way we usually use the term consumer. People bought things, of course. They bought food and other essentials, clothes, bicycles, and they often aspired to buy more, wristwatches, sewing machines. But they generally bought what was available. They could choose which store or store to buy from and they could haggle about the price. But ultimately, there was zero choice. Don't like the look of something? Don't buy it. But there's probably nothing else.
Fast forward to today and China is a consumer market like no other. The most remarkable transformation the world has ever seen. It's not just there are suddenly so many people with money to spend or that almost overnight they have all the brands in the world to choose from. This is now the biggest retail market on the planet. But what makes it special is much, much bigger than the sheer scale of it. To understand Chinese consumers demands an appreciation of the pace at which China has moved and is moving as we speak. I call it China speed. 20 times the speed of any country on the globe. China speed has impacted every aspect of China's development. But put in the context of the change in Chinese consumers, China speed has seen virtually no cars at all to the biggest new car market in the world, with more than 300 million cars on Chinese roads. It's gone from near zero internet 20 years ago, just internet cafes packed with gamers, to a country of around 700 million avid internet users, almost all of them connecting with their mobile device. This leap from no phones to smartphones came at the same time as retailing went mostly from mum and pup shops to state-of-the-art modern stores. The simultaneous surge in technology and in payments from no credit cards to an integrated, seamless, digital payment platform that rivals the world and, of course, choice, has been rocket fuel for e-commerce and rising wealth has been a powerful catalyst. Online shopping accounts for around a quarter of all retail sales now. The fact is all the more staggering when you consider that at least a third of the country's consumers have yet to get an internet connection. Put simply, once Chinese consumers go online, they go shopping. And that's why today over half of the world's e-commerce takes place in China. Consumers now have the money to spend and they can get anything they want. Fast, at China speed, Delivery within an hour is pretty standard in many places, within half an hour increasingly common. Super fast and efficient service is simply expected. But speed is just one of the ways in which shoppers' expectations have changed. When China started opening up in the 80s and 90s, consumers were in no doubt. They believed that goods from the West were definitely best. Even just 15 years ago, a Chinese-made option was something most people only bought as they couldn't afford the foreign alternative. And that wasn't without good reason. It used to be that Chinese factories with a license to export weren't allowed to make their goods for sale in China. So there were two tiers of quality and the local option was often pretty shoddy. Foreign brands became shorthand for better and in a highly image-conscious society became shorthand for I have arrived. But with typical China speed, the hunger for all things foreign and the willingness to pay a huge premium for it has been severely challenged. One reason is that now, made in China is actually pretty good and often it's world-beating. Local businesses realised a while back that happy consumers were more valuable in the long term. They studied what the foreign brands were doing and wanted a share of that premium pricing. So they learned from it. That meant producing better quality goods for starters. But they also began to appreciate the magic of marketing, of making an emotional connection as well as a sale. They understand the power of telling stories about innovation and provenance workmanship and design. Chinese brands which previously had been copying or playing catch-up are now often leaders in their category. In many, they're credible, appealing alternatives to foreign brands. And as consumers move from no choice to an abundance of choice,
they quickly became incredibly discerning. Equally comfortable in luxury boutiques, buying online or shopping in a wet market. No longer does a high price automatically signal better quality or higher desirability. And a foreign brand isn't seen as necessarily better. The days of dumping last season's stock on the China market and expecting shoppers to be grateful are long gone. In normal times, around 150 million Chinese tourists go abroad each year. They're sophisticated, savvy shoppers. And designing for Chinese consumers means much more than making it red and putting the year of the rabbit on it. Global brands must now design products in China for China. And they must do this not in the usual couple of years, but in months at China speed, because this is what Chinese brands are doing now. And there's no shame in buying local anymore. In fact, there's real pride in the success of Chinese brands, especially those doing well abroad. So consumers are happy to choose made in China. And they'll even pay a premium if that's justified. But this is not just patriotism at work. Chinese consumers are buying Chinese brands with pride. Not because those brands are local, but because these purchases make sense and they make people feel good. So if you're an international brand wondering what all this means for your future in China, the task is clear. Be highly competitive on price and justify a premium. Be top of mind not just by bombarding people with advertising but by telling people powerful brand stories and by finding ways to make people's lives easier and better. And innovate. Do it fast, do it well, and do it specifically for China. Consumers' expectations of excellence have gone beyond products themselves. Nowadays, consumer service has to be spot on and, of course, fast. If people make a complaint to a business online, they expect it to be resolved within five minutes, not five working days. Watch out, any brand that lets its customers down, and that's easily done when expectations are so high. There are nearly 900 million social media users in China. Bad reviews travel fast, at China speed. But what makes a good experience for Chinese consumers today is not just the absence of something going wrong. The whole process of browsing, choosing and buying needs to be friction-free. It's now possible in China to pay with just a smile. Shopping also needs to be entertaining or informative. It must be fun or make life better in some other way. An amazing experience is simply expected and consumers won't hang around for long if they don't find it. People want an experience that can be remembered and photographed and shared, of course. They want to feel special, like something's been done just for them. And in a country where there's still a strong sense of collectivism, people want to do things together, like turn shopping into a game, even when they're apart. Displaying status is no less important today than it was 20 years ago. Back when Chanel and Louis Vuitton and a handful of others were all seen as interchangeable. Now there are new, more nuanced ways of attaining and expressing status. Being first in the know delivers instant kudos. The delight of discovery is increasingly important. So while millions used to cover the same collection of luxury items, it's personalization that's now far more important. Consumers don't want to be the same as everyone else. I used to say that Chinese consumers wanted to stand up, but not stand out. Today, they absolutely want to stand out, especially the young. They want to express themselves through music, video, how they look, what they do, and what they buy. What China Speed has led to is a highly connected, highly demanding, and discerning consumer, 
who often feels pulled in different directions at once. A kind of yin and yang tension that, in its powerful Chinese way, has its origins way back in China's rich history. Here are those yin and yang new forces that will be the defining characteristics of how Chinese consumers will grow and their demands change in the next phase of their rapid development. So, whilst there's growing concern about keeping healthy, especially now, there's also a yearning to indulge, to live for the moment. There's still badge value in having something luxurious, but also respect for getting great value for money. There's an appetite for acquiring more things, and yet a stronger sense that time and experiences are more important. There's excitement about what's fresh and new, an affection for things and brands that have been around for centuries. People want to be themselves, but also part of something bigger. They demand constant connectivity and retain strong connections with their past. With China Speed, China's consumers have become sophisticated, proud, discerning, dynamic, and even in these times of a pandemic, incredibly optimistic. In the next two years alone, another 150 million people are set to join the ranks of China's middle classes. That'll add up to over half a billion people with disposable income. In other words, consumers. When China began its modern opening up to the world, Deng Xiaoping talked about socialism with Chinese characteristics. And today, we might talk about a new kind of consumerism, one with Chinese characteristics. <laughs>